Good day, 7STE! Today's discussion will be about Environmental Science Quarter 4, Module 5, Environmental Policies in the Philippines. The content of this video is taken from the self-learning modules produced by the Learning Resource Management and Development System of the School's Division of Bulacan. Objectives Describe the different environmental laws and policies in the Philippines. At the end of this module, you are expected to 1. Name the government environmental laws and policies to protect the land, water, and air. 2. Describe the implementation of the laws and policies on land, water, and air. And 3. Cite situations observed within the community in which environmental laws and policies are adopted. What I know. Choose the letter of the best answer. Write the letter of your choice on your answer sheet. See pages 1 to 2 of quarter 4, module 5. What's in? In this section, let's test if you still remember some of the environmental laws of the Philippines by answering the activity below. Modify true or false. Write true if the statement is correct and false if otherwise. If the statement is false, write the words that made it wrong. Number one, the purpose of environmental policies is to reduce or minimize the impacts of human activity both on the natural environment for its own sake and on humanity itself. Answer, true. Number two, air quality, water quality, and global climate change are some of the areas of concern about environmental loss. Answer, true. Number three, RA-9175, also known as Chainsaw Act, is an act regulating the ownership, possession, sale, importation, and use of chainsaws, penalizing violations thereof and for other purposes. Answer, true. Number four, any act of cruelty to any animals, including pet animals, shall be penalized, is stated in RA-8749, or Animal Welfare Act of 1998? Answer, false. The word that made it incorrect is 8749. It should be 8485. Number 5, the Philippine Mining Act of 1995, also known as RA-7942, states that all mineral resources in public and private lands within the territory and exclusive economic zone of the Republic of the Philippines is owned by the state. Answer, true. What's new? Do's and don'ts. Look at the pictures below. Tell whether we should or shouldn't do it to our environment. Number one, using of solar energy. Answer, should. Number two, cutting down trees. Answer, shouldn't. Number three, turning off lights when not in use. Answer, should. Number four, pouring factory waste into water resources. Answer, shouldn't. Number five, using filters in factories to lessen the air pollution. Answer, should. Before we start our discussion, let us first familiarize ourselves with the different terminologies that will be used in this module. Effluent means discharges from known source which is passed into a body of water or land or wastewater flowing out of a manufacturing plant, industrial plant, including domestic, commercial, and recreational facilities. Non-point source means any source of pollution not identifiable as point source to include but not be limited to runoff from irrigation or rainwater which picks up pollutants from farms and urban areas. Point source means any identifiable source of pollution with specific point of discharge into a particular water body. Mobile source means any vehicle propelled by or through combustion of carbon-based or other fuel constructed and operated principally for the conveyance of persons or the transportation of property goods. Fixed or stationary source means any building or immobile structure, 
facility or installation which emits or may emit any air pollutant. Open burning shall refer to the thermal destruction of waste by means of direct exposure to fire. Furthermore, this definition shall apply to traditional small-scale methods of community sanitation siga. Open dumps shall refer to a disposal area wherein the solid waste are indiscriminately thrown or disposed of without due planning and consideration of environmental and health standards. Solid waste shall refer to all discarded household, commercial waste, non-hazardous, institutional, ports, harbor, and industrial waste, street sweepings, construction debris, agricultural waste, and other non-hazardous or non-toxic solid waste. Recycling shall refer to the treating of used or waste materials through a process of making them suitable for beneficial use and for other purposes, and includes any process by which solid waste materials are transformed into new products in such a manner that the original products may lose their identity and which may be used as raw materials for the production of other goods or services. Sanitary landfill shall refer to a waste disposal site designed, constructed, operated, and maintained in a manner that exerts engineering control over significant potential environmental impacts arising from the development and operation of the facility. Recyclable materials shall refer to any waste materials retrieved from the waste stream and free from contamination that can still be converted into suitable beneficial use or for other purposes, including, but not limited to, newspaper, ferrous scrap metal, non-ferrous scrap metal, used oil, corrugated cardboard, aluminum, glass, office paper, tin cans, plastics, etc. Environmental Policies in the Philippines Our country, the Philippines, is a constitutional republic comprising about more than 7,000 islands and attracts many tourists and companies. Due to this fact, the government assigned different departments or agencies to protect our environment. In accordance with Executive Order No. 192, the Department of Environment and Natural Resources or DENR took charge of all environmental administration. The task of DENR is to make policy decisions on environment and natural resources and to achieve sustainable development it needs to balance development activities with environmental management. The Department of Environment and Natural Resources is responsible for the conservation, management, and development of the country's environment and natural resources. It shall ensure the proper use of these resources and the protection of the environment within the framework of sustainable development. Environmental policy is any measure made by a government or corporation or other public or private organization regarding the effects of human activities on the environment, particularly those measures that are designed to prevent or reduce the harmful effects of human activities on ecosystems. The main goal of environmental policy is to regulate resource use or reduce pollution to promote human welfare and or protect natural systems. Just like other Southeast Asian nations, the Philippines is experiencing rapid population growth in its cities. The air is being polluted, especially in Metro Manila areas. Rivers and domestic waters in different towns and cities are suffering from water pollution. Because of the increasing population, the volume of waste products is also increasing, creating environmental pollution resulting from their disposal. Natural environments are increasingly under threat. These are the environmental problems the country is facing, and their resolution is a pressing task. Population pressure on cities leads to air, water, 
noise, and other environmental pollution, as well as decrease in housing facilities and in green vegetation. Problems resulting from population pressures on industrial development include industrial and environmental pollution and unemployment. Presidential Decree 1151 or the Philippine Environmental Policy sets out the national environmental policies, national environmental targets, the right to enjoy a healthy environment, guideline for the Environmental Impact Statement or EIS, and the guidelines for implementation bodies. It was enacted in June 6, 1977 to protect the right of the people to a healthy environment through a requirement of environmental impact assessments and statements. Of interest to private corporations among this is the guideline relating to EIS when engaging in activities and projects that are bound to have a major impact on the environment all organizations, including government organizations and private enterprises, are required to draw up and submit an EIS. EIS, or Environmental Impact Statement, is a document prepared and submitted by the project proponent and or EIA consultant that serves as an application for an ECC. It is a comprehensive study of the significant impacts of a project on the environment. Presidential Decree PD-1152 or the Philippine Environment Code provides a comprehensive program of environmental protection and management. The code establishes specific environment management policies and prescribes environmental quality standards. PD-1586 in 1978 thus built up an environmental impact statement system. Specifically, Section 2 states there is hereby established an EIS system founded and based on the EIS required under Section 4 of PD-1151 of all agencies and instrumentalities of the national government, including government-owned companies and corporations, as well as private corporations, firms, and entities, for every proposed project and undertaking which significantly affect the quality of the environment. Environmental Impact Assessment, or EIA, is a process of evaluating the likely environmental impacts of a proposed project or development, taking into account interrelated socio-economic, cultural, and human health impacts, both beneficial and adverse. In the Philippines, we have Environmental Impact Statement System under PD-1586, which was ratified on June 11, 1978. The main objective of this law is to maintain the balance between the environment and the socio-economic development of the country. The main concern of the Philippine EIS system, or the PEISS, is with assessing the direct, and indirect impacts of a project on the biophysical and human environment and guaranteeing that these impacts are addressed by proper environmental protection and enhancement measures. It aids proponents in incorporating environmental considerations in planning their projects as well as in determining the environment's impact on their project. Government agencies, as reiterated by RA 7160 or the Local Government Code, have an important role in environmental management. RA 7160 was enacted into law, transferring control and responsibility of delivering basic services to the hands of local government units or LGU. It aimed to enhance provision of services in the grassroots level as well as improve the efficiency in resource allocation. The DENR felt the urgency to develop an integrated approach towards an effective implementation of the country's environmental management functions through a formalized interagency collaboration specifically under the Philippine EIS system. 
a memorandum of agreement with 29 GAs was made to incorporate environmental aspects and consider the conditions of the environmental compliance certificate into their decision-making process and require the issuance of an ECC prior to the release of permits, licenses, and resolutions by the participating GAs. Some revisions have been made and one of these is to enhance the effectiveness and efficiency in the implementation of the PEISS. The revisions focus on the integration of new EMB DNR policies to further promote environmental impact assessment as a planning and decision-making tool under the Philippine Environmental Impact Statement System or PEISS. It is also stated that the findings of EIA may be used or considered in giving permits, clearances, licenses, endorsements, resolutions, and other government approvals. The three major environmental problems that the government agencies are facing are water pollution, air pollution, and waste products which affect the quality of soil. Water pollution of rivers, lakes, and marine water in the Philippines is now in a very serious state. Major rivers in Metro Manila areas are heavily polluted by industrial and domestic effluent and waste. In rural areas, water quality is dropping due to agricultural chemicals, chemical fertilizers, heavy metals, and toxic substances. Losses due to environmental damage and pollution, the Philippines has many water-related laws, but their enforcement is weak and beset with problems that include inadequate resources, poor database, and weak cooperation among different agencies and local government units. Republic Act 9275 or the Philippine Clean Water Act of 2004 is an act providing for a comprehensive water quality management and for other purposes. The state shall pursue a policy of economic growth in a manner consistent with the protection, preservation, and revival of the quality of our fresh, brackish, and marine waters. To achieve this end, the framework for sustainable development shall be pursued. The Philippine Clean Water Act of 2004 aims to protect the country's water bodies from pollution from land-based sources such as industries, commercial establishments, agriculture, and community or household activities. Under RA 9275, it shall be the policy of the state to streamline processes and procedures in the prevention, control, and abatement of pollution of the country's water resources. To promote environmental strategies, use of appropriate economic instruments, and of control mechanisms for the protection of water resources. To formulate a holistic national program of water quality management that recognizes that water quality management issues cannot be separated from concerns about water sources and ecological protections, water supply, public health, and quality of life. To formulate an integrated water quality management framework through proper delegation and effective coordination of functions and activities. To promote commercial and industrial processes and products that are environment-friendly and energy-efficient. To encourage cooperation and self-regulation among citizens and industries through the application of incentives and market-based instruments and to promote the role of private industrial enterprises in shaping its regulatory profile within the acceptable boundaries of public health and environment. To provide for a comprehensive management program for water pollution focusing on pollution prevention. To promote public information and education and to encourage the participation of uninformed and active public in water quality management and monitoring. To formulate and enforce a system of accountability for short and long-term adverse environmental impact of a project, program, or activity. 
to encourage civil society and other sectors, particularly labor, the academe, and business undertaking environment-related activities in their efforts to organize, educate, and motivate the people in addressing pertinent environmental issues and problems at the local and national levels. Furthermore, according to PD 984, Section 6, Item G, or the Pollution Control Law, this gives the agency the right to collect environmental users' fee, or pollution charges, in proportion to the burden on the environment. PD 984 put in the DNR with the authority to issue, renew, or deny permits under such conditions as it may deem reasonable for the prevention and abatement of pollution from the discharge of sewage, industrial waste, and enforce reasonable fees and charges for the issuance or renewal of all permits herein required. PD 984 enacted 1976, implemented 1978, to prevent, abate, and control pollution of water, air, and land for the more effective utilization of the resources. The major environmental problem in the Philippines is air pollution. Many cities and areas in the Philippines are exposed to air pollution. The causes of air pollution can be divided into two depending on the type of source. Letter A, mobile sources such as automobiles and letter B, fixed sources such as power plants and factories. Based on the research conducted in Metro Manila area in 1990, it revealed that an estimated 21% of particle-like substances, 83% of nitrogen oxides, 99% of carbon monoxides, and 12% of sulfur oxides are due to automobile exhaust. According to the 2019 World Air Quality Report, the Philippines holds the 57th place from the country with the worst air quality. In contrast, the Philippines ranks as the country with the lowest pollutant amongst Southeast Asian countries. To deal with this problem, the government assembled RA-8749, an act providing for a comprehensive air pollution control policy and for other purposes. This act shall be known as the Philippine Clean Air Act of 1999. The state shall pursue a policy of balancing development and environmental protection. To achieve this end, the framework for sustainable development shall be pursued. The passage of the Philippine Clean Air Act on June 23, 1999 provides for a comprehensive air pollution control policy as it outlines the government's measure to reduce air pollution by including environmental protection activities into its development plans. Under RA-8749, it shall be the policy of the state to formulate a holistic national program of air pollution management that shall be implemented by the government through proper delegation and effective coordination of functions and activities. Encourage cooperation and self-regulation among citizens and industries through the application of market-based instruments. Focus primarily on pollution prevention rather than on control and provide for a comprehensive management program for air pollution. Promote public information and education and to encourage the participation of uninformed and active public in air quality planning and monitoring. Formulate and enforce a system of accountability for short and long-term adverse environmental impact of a project, program, or activity. This shall include the setting up of a funding or guarantee mechanism for cleanup and environmental rehabilitation and compensation for personal damages. Lastly, we have the solid waste management which is considered as one of the most serious environmental problems in the Philippines. Annually, the estimated waste generated is 10 million tons in 2010 and expected to rise by 40% in the year 2020. Republic Act No. 9003 
also known as the Ecological Solid Waste Management Act of 2000, provides the necessary policy framework, institutional mechanisms, and mandate to the local government units to achieve 25% waste reduction through establishing an integrated solid waste management plans based on three R's, reduce, reuse, and recycle. Senator Loren Legarda, the principal author of RA 9003, said ecological solid waste management should be a way of life to attain a zero-waste economy. Under RA 9003, it is the policy of the state to adopt a systematic, comprehensive, and ecological solid waste management program which shall a. ensure the protection of public health and environment, B. Utilize environmentally sound methods that maximize the utilization of valuable resources and encourage resources conservation and recovery. C. Set guidelines and targets for solid waste avoidance and volume reduction through source reduction and waste minimization measures, including composting, recycling, reuse, recovery, green charcoal process, and others, before collection, treatment, and disposal in appropriate and environmentally sound solid waste management facilities in accordance with ecologically sustainable development principles. D. Ensure the proper segregation, collection, transport, storage, treatment, and disposal of solid waste through the formulation and adoption of the best environmental practices in ecological waste management, excluding incineration. E. Promote national research and development programs for improved solid waste management and resource conservation techniques, more effective institutional arrangement, and indigenous and improved methods of waste reduction, collection, separation, and recovery. F. Encourage greater private sector participation in solid waste management. G. Retain primary enforcement and responsibility of solid waste management with local government units while establishing a cooperative effort among the national government, other local government units, non-government organizations, and the private sector. H. Encourage cooperation and self-regulation among waste generators through the application of market-based instruments. I. Institutionalize public participation in the development and implementation of national and local integrated comprehensive and ecological waste management programs. J. Strengthen the integration of ecological solid waste management and resource conservation and recovery topics into the academic curricula of formal and non-formal education in order to promote environmental awareness and action among the citizenry. Almost all wastes are thrown in open dump sites. Smoky Mountain in Tondo and Payatas Dump Site in Quezon City are famous dump sites in the Philippines that are now closed due to the mandate of RA 9003. Smoky Mountain was called as such because of the thick smoke coming from burning waste. There were 2 million tons of waste dumped there. It made a big mountain. The reason Smoky Mountain closed was because the local government repossessed that land for commercial development. They relocated the residents as a result to neighboring landfills. The Payatas Dump Site, established in the 1970s, was an open dump site in Lupang Pangako in Payatas, Quezon City. The Payatas Landslide was a garbage dump collapse at Payatas, Quezon City, Philippines on July 10, 2000. A large pile of garbage first collapsed and then went up in flames, which resulted in the destruction of about 100 squatters' houses. The dumping ground was immediately closed following the incident by then-President Joseph Estrada, but was reopened weeks later by then-Quezon City Mayor Ismael Matay Jr. to avert an epidemic in the city due to uncollected garbage caused by the closure. In 2004, the Payatas dump site was reconfigured as a controlled disposal facility but was closed in December 2010. 
Due to these incidents, many of the waste products or garbage of the citizens are illegally thrown in different open areas, lakes, and rivers. As a result of this action, soil pollution, sanitation problems, insect and pest plague, as well as the continuous combustion of waste or incineration, air pollution, and water pollution increases. The collection and disposal of solid waste is the responsibility of local authorities, according to the law. Despite the methods of disposal adopted as described above, the increased cost of refuse disposal is now a problem. For environmental policies to be implemented, it should outline the commitment to reduce its impact on the environment. The policy should be specific and relevant to the activities. It should be realistic, achievable, and committed to lessen or reduce environmental impact. Environmental policy can include laws and policies addressing water and air pollution, chemical and oil spills, smog, drinking water quality, land conservation and management, and wildlife protection, such as the protection of endangered species. Here are some criteria that an environmental policy should contain. 1. Continually improve your environmental performance. 2. Prevent pollution and reduce impact on the environment. 3. Comply with relevant environmental laws. 4. Efficient use of water, energy, and other natural resources. 5. Sustainable transport. 6. Recycling and minimizing waste. 7. Use of non-toxic products. And 8. Raising awareness and training employees on environmental issues. What's more? Independent Activity 1. Write the type of sources of air pollution and give at least two examples of it. Use the pattern below. Independent Assessment 1. And scramble the jumbled letters to reveal the word being described. Independent Activity 2. Circle the words you encountered in this lesson. Use the words below as your guide. After finding the words, choose three words and describe it. Independent Assessment 2. Read carefully the statement before answering. Write green if the statement is true and black if the statement is false. Independent Activity 3. List down at least three ways in which you observe the implementation of environmental policies in school and at home. Example, not incinerating garbage, recycling, etc. Independent Assessment 3. Match column A stating the environmental policies and descriptions to column B containing the abbreviation of the environmental laws. Your choices are RA9003, PD1151, RA9275, PD984, and RA8749. What I have learned. Read the environmental policies stated below and identify in what Republic Act it belongs. Choose your answers provided in the box. What I can do Assuming that you are part of an environmental organization in your community and you are assigned to create an environmental policy for your organization, write a simple environmental policy containing brief statement on the following criteria. Number 1. Organization mission and information about its operation. 2. Commitment to continually improve your organization's environmental performance and how you will effectively manage your environmental impact. 3. Recognition that your organization will comply with the environmental legislations or laws. And 4. You may also address in your environmental policy the minimizing of waste, recycling of packaging materials, efficient use of water and energy, etc. Look at the format below for your reference. Your work will be assessed using the rubric found in your module. Name of your organization. State your organization's mission and purpose. Write here the scope of your policy. Write your environmental policy by stating the specific policies and practices.
see sample statement below. So for the organization's mission and purpose, we shall strive to integrate sustainability in our organization operations. Specifically, we shall adopt the following policies and practices. Reuse, recycle, and reduce. And then add some more. Reduce, reuse, recycle. We shall discourage the use of disposable products by using washable or renewable items. And then cite policies and practices for reduce, reuse, and recycle. Assessment. Choose the letter of the correct answer. Write your answer on your answer sheet. See pages 15 to 16 of quarter 4, module 5. Additional activity, performance task number 4.5. Put a check on the second column if the statement is observed in your barangay. If it's not observable, as a student and member of the community, write a suggestion on how to meet and practice this indicator. 1. Garbage waste are properly segregated per household. 2. Incineration of garbage is prohibited. 3. Throwing any form of garbage waste in the creek is prohibited. Example given, dead body animals, leftover food shells. 4. Residents help in cleaning the community surroundings. And 5. There are posters or signages saying bawal magtapo ng basura dito. Environmental Science, Quarter 4, Module 5, Environmental Policies in the Philippines. Answer the following on your answer sheet. What I know... What's more, independent activities 1, 2, 3, independent assessments 1, 2, 3, what I have learned, what I can do, assessment, and additional activity. The additional activity will be your performance task number 4.5. Upload your answer sheets in your Google Drive folder. The path is Environmental Science, Quarter 4, Module 5. Thank you for attending our Environmental Science online class. God bless you all.